Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video and you may see something familiar behind me here. We're down here underneath the Interstate 380 bridges because we're doing a recap and revisit of the abandoned train trestle where I faced my fears with Cliff a few months ago. We came down here though because we have some visitors with us. We're going to show them some of the cool areas that are found down here in the abandoned town of Greenville and we're going to make our way to the train trestle. But behind me here you see Mike from Out Naturing. Cliff the Wandering Woodsman, Adam T, and behind me is Matt with his mad dad and minivan with Alan, RJ, and Laura. I feel bad I had him bring his minivan down here. We had to go through some tough terrain with the vehicles, but nonetheless, we're down here though. It's around 35 degrees. It's sunny. We have a lot of walking involved. We got our drones, and we're going to have an incredible day, and you're invited too. So if you're ready, come along with us. So what the plan is, is we're going to do a lot of exploring today. We're going to revisit some of the locations that me and Cliff have been to before in the town of Greenville. Right now we're headed down here to the gas and water powerhouse. But the main feature attraction is going to be the, it's called the Jessup Viaduct. And when we get to that, I did learn some information I will share with you about it. But we're going to kind of show what is engulfed in this whole area here, which is now officially abandoned pretty much due to the construction of Interstate 380. Well, we got the gang coming down here behind us here. This is one of the better intact structures down here. And the sign's still there. It's, I think it's Scranton Gas and Water Powerhouse, 19, 19 something, 1910. So let's spin you around and give you a JP videos view. So everyone that is filming today, including Cliff, RJ, Matt, and everyone else, you will find the links down below so you can see their perspective of today's adventure. couple cool features here I remember from last time which I'm going to try to find there's like a undercut area almost like a little tunnel but everywhere we go there's steps foundations and other cool stuff Yeah, here's one of them here. Yeah, if we uh, hop across here, I think it goes underneath the ground over there. This is what I was trying to show you guys here. You see that hole? It actually goes underneath and comes out about 10 feet on the other side. There's like a little room there too. It's like a basement. So here's the structure we found last time, it has some pretty neat graffiti on it, but we didn't know if it was a uh, type of well or maybe TNT storage, but it's well made, whatever it is. We're actually going to continue up this way because this is where that pipe is that I walked out onto. I want to show the guys what it looks like. And here it is. It's an intake pipe, you can see water is still coming out of it. 
but it actually continues in the ground, making its way back to the powerhouse. So right there below Adam is actually where it broke off from. That continues underground all the way to the building. We'll go for a walk and we'll follow Matt. We're oh, gonna follow you. <laughs> There's a date I discovered I didn't see last time. It looks like 'Cause you're not wearing Nikes. Now I did bring my waterproof camera, so I may stick it in the water here, see if we get some footage to see how it looks. You gonna walk out this time? I probably will, yeah. It wasn't too bad actually, it's pretty sturdy. We're gonna make our way back now, head up towards the rails and head towards the trestle, which is, everyone is waiting to get on that because it's gonna be incredible with the drones, with the views. And from when we were here last time, it was all foliage, now it's completely bare. So we'll have a whole unique perspective and different look at it from last time. So if you guys would like to see a look back as to how Greenville looked when we first discovered it, I will link part one and part two down below in the description that we can see what we're talking about and how it looks from earlier this year. Still pretty much the same, but just a different time of year. And it looks uh, a bit cooler, but I'm kind of just excited to share it with everyone else here. Oh, those holes are up here too, aren't they? What? Those holes in the ground up here? Oh, yeah, 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 and those little... Uh, the drains? Like yeah. yeah. Alan's doing whatever it takes to get that shot. <laughs> Even at the risk of losing his camera. <laughs>
little bit of erosion. And look at the rails, they come straight out. It's like Indiana Jones style. That's the abandoned set of tracks. Used to be a double set of tracks here. That erosion's crazy. You gonna walk out in the middle of that, Alan? Uh, RJ? No, no. Ball. <laughs> I'm kidding, you know. No, no. No. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> if you do it, I'm turning the camera away. So up behind us here there's a white pickup truck that rolled uh, rolled up on us. Well, not on us, but in our vicinity. <laughs> we wasn't, weren't quite sure what he was doing, but we heard a gunshot. There's actually a kind of unofficial shooting range there. So like, hopefully it wasn't a warning shot. Hopefully it was a... <laughs> like Bob's shooting range. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Bob's. <laughs> yeah, it was actually kind of odd that it was only one shot. Yeah. So we're just going to keep moving on, though, away, and hopefully don't encounter any issues. So coming from the opposite direction that we came the first time, we do have a considerably longer walk than the first time, but we're able to at least show you some of the uh, structures from Greenville, like the gas and water powerhouse, that pipe area. But we are following the tracks now, and we have uh, probably another five, 10 minutes until we get to the trestle. But then once we cross, we're gonna be kind of heading back towards the direction we were on the opposite side of the river and pick up where we left off when me and Cliff first uh, traversed that area and saw some of the remnants of the uh, water tank, water tower, and the narrow gauge rail uh, operations there and stuff like that. So a bit more to go. And then once we get up to the rail, I'm sorry, the trestle, we'll pick up with the video there. We're going to be crossing it, getting some photos, obviously throwing the drone up in the air, getting some nice aerial views from the top with all of us on there. So I'm kind of excited to share that with you guys. We have a lot more time to go until we get to do everything, but for you guys, it'll just be a short wait with the magic of editing. So we'll see you in a second. All right, so we're making our way closer to the bridge and looked down, just happened to glance and found this. It's part of an abandoned truck. Yeah, looks like maybe a Dodge. That's crazy. It's like, how did that get there? There's no wheels, no frame. It's just like the cab of it and the hood. The 73 to 78, I can tell you that much. Got bullet holes in it. That's tell you what, you bring Alan in the woods without Nikes and he gets really adventurous. <laughs> so if you guys want to see his footage of what that truck looks like, just watch his video. But I'll stay up here in case he falls. <laughs> And that's what we've all been waiting for, the abandoned train trestle. We're going to get closer, climb the embankment, and figure out our next plan of attack to make it across it. See who's going to go first and see where we're going to launch the drones from. Then we're going to cross it and make our way back this way along that ridge line, back towards Greenville. You're going to too. All right, so gonna we're going to go up the hillside here, meet up with the top of the bridge, and take it from there. Oh, that's such a good shot. All right, so this is going to be the not fun part. Probably the most difficult climbing we're going to do all day today. But it's going to be worth it. If I go down, at least you'll see it here. Whew. 
That was a hike. So last time we came from that direction, but unfortunately the area we had to cross through is posted. So we took the scenic route. All right, Matt's going first. We'll get some footage of him crossing. It's just a an amazing view right here, though. So I did do some research for my last time that I was here. I will share a couple quick facts with you. This is the Jessup Branch Viaduct. It was originally built in 1895 for the Erie Railroad. It's 545 feet across. Highest point above the river is 10 stories, roughly 100 feet. It was last used in the early 1980s. At that point, it was the Erie Lackawanna Railroad. And you can probably hear Alan's throwing his drone up in the air. Being my second time here, I am still nervous, but not nearly as bad as last time. But once he's done flying, I'm going to throw my drone up in the air and get some spectacular footage. But I can't really express how amazing it looks. How what do you think so far? I mean, this is beautiful. Very, very, very scary. I'm terrified being up here, but it's all for the views. It looks gorgeous up here. Can't wait to get some nice pictures. What do you think, Adam? This is absolutely incredible. I'm very excited about doing this crossover. It's not every day you find an opportunity like this that presents itself to be able to cross such an impressive structure from so long ago and to see what we're able to see. And it's just a gorgeous day for it. It gets harder before it gets easier, I'll tell you that. There's Alan, you'll be able to see his drone footage in his channel. And in a moment, I'm gonna throw up mine. And hopefully we can get everybody kinda of in the middle of the bridge and get some pretty cool shots. All right, so I wanted to check in here and let you know what we're gonna be doing next. The footage you're gonna see next is gonna be from my DJI Spark, a drone that I've owned for a while now and has performed flawlessly time and time again. After filming, I came home, transferred all the files from my devices to the computer and began reviewing them to see how they came out. When I got to the drone footage, it turned out that those files were corrupted. For some reason, they didn't save properly to the SD card, and this is a problem that's never happened before. But it wasn't just myself that had the problem. Alan from Revenge of the Apocalypse was flying his spark. He had the same issue. The files didn't save correctly to the SD card. We believe it was a software glitch because it's never happened before, and I've owned mine for over a year, and it's recorded perfectly fine to the SD card. I even did additional test footage afterwards and those files recorded properly. So it was an isolated incident. Hopefully it doesn't happen again, but what actually ended up happening is I have a fail safe where the files that I record on the drone actually download to my phone, but it's lower quality. It's kind of like a backup just in case something like this was to happen. The footage is typically something I wouldn't use normally because it is lower quality, but it is better than no footage at all. So the footage you're gonna see doesn't look up to par with my normal footage and normal drone videos. So just keep that in mind when you do watch it. It's not crystal clear quality, but for the most part, you will be able to see what we wanted to show you in this video. So we're going to go back to the video now and check out that drone footage.
All right, so as you just saw, I just put up the Blue Jay in the air. Got some amazing footage like I did last time. Got a couple of nice group photos. And right, excuse me, right now in the middle of the bridge, the trestle, it was very nerve wracking trying to get everything situated, landing the drone in my hand, putting it away, getting the camera back set up. And now everyone else is across. We're gonna make our way across now. I am nervous, not like last time, but you obviously do realize how high you are. Um, especially being 10 stories in the air, it's, it's no small distance. So I'm gonna spin the camera around and we'll continue our way across. But uh, I will admit that first time coming over, I kind of went through the same thing that you did when you went across the first time. Like I, my heart was beating and I was, I was actually pretty scared the first time. Get, once I got to like the middle and I started hearing some creakiness, it was like, and then looking down at the boards, you're like, you get that kind of like vertigo and I had to kind of look up and really kind of orient myself. But uh, second time going back out wasn't too bad. Yeah. Okay, so now we all made it across. We're gonna continue on where we went last time cliff myself where we follow the tracks came upon the round base concrete cylinder which was a base for a water tank to fill steam locomotives and some other various structures and we're hoping to continue all the way over to back to Greenville and see what we discover along the way and then eventually we have to cross the river somewhere to get back to our vehicle so got about four hours of daylight left probably a couple miles of walking and I think we'll be okay as long as we keep moving and get to our destination without any uh, difficulties. So I'm not gonna repeat and show you everything that I showed you last time. I'll kind of show you the new stuff and just give you a, bait, a brief glimpse as to what we discovered last time here. So I'm just showing some of the guys the remnants of the filling station there. There was a round wooden barrel up there, water tank to fill the locomotives with water. Okay, Mr. B-Roll. <laughs> There's some behind the scenes footage of Cliff doing his infamous B-Roll shots that he stole from me. <laughs> People like it. <laughs> Where'd you get that idea from? Uh, I stole it, some guy on YouTube. Oh. I stole it from, you know, so do you find a popular YouTuber and you steal their ideas and stuff. <laughs> 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 We got some icicles forming already. It's 
kind of cool coming different time of year now. You can see this was all originally dripping water. Ooh, there's like a little cave there. There's a little, like, a little natural cavity here it goes through and just too small to fit in there, but it looks pretty neat though. It goes probably about almost 10 feet back. All right, so we're coming up uh, pretty soon on where we ended our first trek with Cliff and myself following the rails a little bit further ahead. But we're going to continue on, hopefully go all the way to the other trestle, which is a much smaller but much worse condition that is also part of Greenville. This is a really nice trail, though. It's rail going through the middle. It's nice, smooth silt material and of course in the distance there is where 380 is the big rock cut section you can almost kind of see there's a road right there that's kind of what we i believe what we took to get down to park our vehicles and that's what we have to return on hopefully in one piece you got the re-railers A lot more open, a lot more visibility compared to last time with all the leaves down now. You could see quite a distance. And this makes for a very relaxing, picturesque scene here. Still a little chilly out, a little breezy, but otherwise, at least we got sunny skies, no snow, no rain. Just a bunch of friends hanging out, exploring and making more memories. So right up here is another location that we checked out last time. This is the ruins of the Brickworks building. And up on top and to the left is where Cliff actually found some narrow gauge rail for some type of mine operation, whether it's a gravity railroad or colliery. But that's what we were told by some of the locals. All right, so we're going to use this opportunity here and this wall to take a little break here, get a little bit of food in our stomachs, and to just give our feet a rest, and then we're going to continue on. In case you're wondering, I have some jerky and good old PB&J. So when you're coming on long hikes like this, definitely advisable to bring water. Bring a snack, you never know if you're gonna get stranded out here. That's just good to keep your energy levels up as well. So right there is Cliff, being a loner, eating his lunch by himself. He doesn't wanna hang out with the cool kids. Okay, so the one thing with exploring is that not everything goes according to the plan, and our plans changed last minute because originally, when me and Cliff came the first time, we ended our trail only a few hundred feet behind us, and we turned around and said we're gonna come back to follow it and see the train. There's the Delaware Lackawanna.
got sidetracked by the train there, but uh, what I was saying is that our original plan was to keep going further all the way to Greenville and find a way to cross up there. But unfortunately now at the time change, we are quickly running out of daylight. We have roughly probably hour and a half, two hours at the most. And the reason that happened is because where we parked the first time we came here, we parked relatively close to the trestle. We had maybe a 10 minute walk. We got to it and we were able to cross it without any time constraints, so to speak. And uh, when we arrived there, the trail that we take was actually posted. It was a property that they used for storage for equipment. So we had to find an alternate route that we came down with Cliff uh, when we did export Greenville, where we knew it wasn't posted, but it brought us much further away from the trestle. So we had to walk kind of back towards the trestle which took a, a considerable amount of time. We also checked out the gas and water powerhouse. But now that we're actually on the other side, we don't know if there's a place to cross over there. We don't know if we have to cross the river or if there's some other means of crossing and we don't wanna get there and then find out there's nothing to use to cross. And then we'd be forced to backtrack and there's no way we'd make it back in time before the sun sets. So to play it safe, we're gonna go back over the trestle one more time and retrace our steps back to the vehicles. I'm not going to show any of that because it's everything that we already saw. Once we do get back though, and we're all situated, I will wrap up the video there. But I am determined to return one more time, even if I come alone, to follow these tracks further, see what else we find, and also follow the tracks in the opposite direction where someone told me there is a, uh, an abandoned rail car that derailed a long time ago and it's just left back there and uh, maybe we'll find that so one way or another i will return before the springtime and we'll follow through with our plans of seeing what else we could find but regardless i think everyone had a, a really good time today got to see some things that we didn't see last time and more, more importantly made some good memories so i'll see you guys in a moment and don't forget to stick around too for possibly some bonus footage or a photo montage. I didn't snap a whole lot of photos today, but we'll see what happens. So see you guys soon. Right, guys that's gonna conclude our adventure today here where we faced our fears yet again on the abandoned train trestle as i mentioned plans didn't go exactly as planned due to the parking situation and daylight the sun is maybe 30 more minutes until it sets but what we did see though hopefully you guys enjoyed hopefully everyone else did as well the trestle was our main focal point so we at least did that that's the main reason we came but we did want to continue further along the rails to see what else we could discover back in this area. It was actually announced too that the town of Greenville area where there's another bridge that you've seen, I think in part two of my video, which is down in the description, they're supposed to be, um, I guess you could say renovating that or reconstructing it into a rail trail type of thing where they're gonna have public walking areas back here. So it's gonna be kind of cool to see how there's once an abandoned area and it's gonna be, I guess you could say reclamated into public walking area and biking. So that'd be cool to do a follow-up. I think it's supposed to start spring of 2020, but um, that's gonna be for another time for another video. As I did mention though, I will return though myself probably in a month or two to follow those tracks like I originally intended on doing towards Greenville and then the opposite direction, which we saw where the other tracks met up and there's supposed to be a, uh, an abandoned rail car back there. So 
it's gonna be a new adventure probably a solo adventure i don't want to drag these guys out again because the uh travel distance for them is much farther than it is for me and on top of that we only have a limited amount of daylight so anyways i love hearing from you guys make sure you leave your comments questions down below i'll do my best to respond to them down in the description as i mentioned you will find links to the greenville part one and two everyone's channel links and links to my facebook page where i do share content that doesn't always make it to youtube as well as my patreon page and merchandise shop which both help fund future adventures with that said i want to thank you so much for watching today and as always i'll see you in the next video good save good save oh darn he made it <laughs> all right so we had our fun playing with the pipe here i guess rj's not done yet it's like he's doing the uh titanic leonardo <laughs> dicaprio thing let me get ahead one more time excuse me <laughs> i got a little excited there oh look who's down here cliff what are you doing here? Yeah, but you came from the wrong direction. It was a good timing though, we got here at the same time. <laughs> Timber!